السلام عليكم we'll talk about dialysis uh, event surveillance as you know NHSN has different types of components uh, the most important for us uh, is patient safety component the patient safety component is divided into three modules procedure associated module device associated module and other modules for the device associated modules we have CLEPSI, VAB, VAE, CAUT, and dialysis events. Today, our focus will be on the dialysis event. If we're talking about the dialysis impact, uh, hemodialysis is associated with high risk of morbidity and uh, mortality. To begin with, these patients are uh, are high risk patients, uh, have reduced immune response exposed to blood diseases uh, and so on uh, bacteremia and localized infections of vascular access site are of are an important cause for morbidity and mortality because uh, the dialysis process itself can introduce uh, bacteria to the blood causing bacteria after one year of treatment those on dialysis have uh, 15 to 20 percent mortality rate with a five percent with a five year survival rate of 50 percent which means we lose uh, half of our patients within five year from starting of dialysis and every year we lose between 15 to 20 percent of our patients uh, because of the frequent hospitalization and receptive antimicrobial drugs hemodialysis patient also are at risk for infection with um, antimicrobial resistant bacteria or MDRO, different types of MDRO, which makes the uh, treatment take longer time and more cost. Measuring and tracking rates of infection and utilizing this information is very important way our start of prevention. So we have to make surveillance for dialysis patients to look for bacteremia, use of antimicrobial medications, and the presence of local infection at the access site. Hemodialysis in Saudi Arabia, this is recent data, indicate that 21,000 uh, plus patients were on renal replacement therapy, the majority of them, 93%, which accounts for 19,500, are on homodialysis and the rates of the dialysis uh, according to the Saudi population of almost three, uh, 30 millions uh, is 631 per million uh, are on dialysis and on every year 142 per million population uh, start new dialysis and the death uh, rate among patients on dialysis is, is almost 88.2% uh, annually, which is very high compared to the non-dialysis patient. And this graph shows you the renal replacement therapy, uh, and we have uh, hemodialysis is this uh, gray color, and as you see, hemodialysis are uh, in consistently increasing over time uh, between 1995 and 2000. 19 and it reaches on 2019 19,500 patients uh, and for the serology because of the infection control uh, measurements we we are seeing uh, stagnant rates for um, uh, hepatitis B and HIV almost uh, but decreasing rate of uh, hepatitis C as you see uh, it is decreased from uh, 3,000 to almost 50%, uh, 1,500. Hemodialysis uh, uh, units in Saudi Arabia, we have uh, 278 hemodialysis centers uh, in Saudi Arabia in, 19, in 2019. Uh, and these are the details. We're not going to throw the details, but uh, just to let you know that MOH is covering almost 50% uh, of these centers or running 50% of these centers and uh, we have nurses, nephrologists uh, and other, um, uh, other uh, healthcare provider 
uh, who deals with hemodialysis patient and who some of them will need training on uh, hemodialysis surveillance. This is a photo of hemodialysis unit uh, and uh, usually the, the, the center receives several patients uh, every day. They are working uh, five days a week and uh, usually uh, the uh, hemodialysis patients receive three sessions per week. There is some recent changes in dialysis event surveillance, uh, including uh, no need for uh, rec uh, documenting influenza vaccination among healthcare workers, uh, adding new pediatric facilities. So now uh, dialysis uh, surveillance can be done in pediatric facilities and adding one of the population group, which is acute kidney injury uh, become eligible to uh, be in dialysis events uh, when they are seen on outpatient clinic that allow this type of patient. So this may be the, the, the main uh, point that we care about in these changes. For dialysis surveillance uh, methodology, it's an active surveillance, which means that we actively looking for dialysis events, including the uh, positive plaque culture, the uh, local infection, and the start of antimicrobial uh, uh, medications. Uh, and it's not only passive surveillance, which means uh, that the centers report the infection, to, uh, the, the events to infection control. The next criteria it is patient based and not lab based surveillance. Patient based surveillance include the lab surveillance as well as information from the patient. As you know that our events include also antimicrobial use and local infection, and these are collected from the patient chart, which means it's a patient-based surveillance. It is prospective surveillance, which means that we are forward looking for or monitor the patients for the development of events. And even our denominator is collected at the beginning of the month in the first two working days, which means it's a prospective surveillance, not retrospective surveillance. Uh, it's a priority directed surveillance or targeted surveillance. And again, uh, we are choosing certain outpatient clinic, surveillance clinic to be included and for certain duration. So <clears throat> this is a priority directed based on risk assessment and based of uh, um, uh, availability of our staff. Uh, so we're, we're not usually doing this over the, uh, all over the year, but only for certain duration. It is risk adjusted because we adjusted the rate by the duration of uh, surveillance. We adjusted the rate by the risk of infection. And the major risk here is the type of access. Um, uh, remember that this is not inpatient. Uh, inpatient locations, we uh, adjust for the, the admission duration or the hospital stay or the ICU stay uh, by looking for patient days and device days. But here we'll, we, we uh, stratify the rate by type of access, which is the major uh, uh, risk factor for uh, for surveillance for infection and this is called risk adjusted by the type of access as well as we can benchmark our rates to internally so intra facility comparison and uh, over time and externally which is external benchmarking our surveillance uh, uh, are done in only outpatient dialysis centers. So if, if we have inpatient dialysis is not included in this module, it's only our, patient, our outpatient dialysis uh, centers. Usually the centers are attached or affiliated with a hospital or uh, inpatient uh, facility. Uh, it doesn't matter, but it, it receives their patient on outpatient uh, sitting. Uh, criteria. So our patient can be uh, 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 receiving a service at, at outpatient hemodialysis clinic, uh, and the new um, the new category uh, if they uh, also accept acute injury, acute kidney injury patients in outpatient clinic. So they should uh, identify them themselves as outpatient hemodialysis clinic 
acute kidney injury. So our population uh, include maintenance hemodialysis patients. These are patients who have renal failure and receive dialysis regularly, usually three sessions per week. So these are called maintenance hemodialysis patients. They are the main category of the patient. But we're also including the transient patient. Transient patient, a patient who is temporarily referred to your center uh, and uh, for, for, for short duration, usually uh, less than a month. Uh, and this is uh, for any reason, like uh, moving for vacation, emergency or short term uh, displacement. This is this transient patient, if they, they should be included in the denominator when you collect the denominator in the first two days of the, uh, of the month and should be included in the numerator if they develop uh, uh, infection or other events. So they are dealt with is exactly similar to the maintenance hemodialysis patient. They are called transient patient. Um, on the same time, if our patient uh, move from our center to outside center, we will not include them. So we, th this will come in the exclusions. Patients with acute kidney injury, these patients uh, have uh, the definition of acute kidney injury in uh, 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 the new definition of acute kidney injury include three criteria. Uh, it is diagnosed by a physician, so it's not self-diagnosed uh, category, acute kidney injury or AKI. Uh, no diagnosis of end-stage renal disease, not diagnosed as ES ES ESRD. Uh, no more than six months has passed since the patient initiated outpatient hemodialysis. So if the patient include this criteria, uh, is not ESRD, but it is he is AKI, and within six months, these are called patients with acute kidney injury. Uh, some centers will allow them to be included, some centers will not allow them to be included. So if they are allowed, uh, the, the dialysis surveillance allow this, it's, it's fine. For the exclusion, non-hemodialysis. So people who receive replacement therapy that is not hemodialysis, like peritoneal dialysis or a kidney transplant, that are not included in this module. In patient hemodialysis, patient who received temporary hemodialysis uh, during their stay in the hospital, inpatient location, because there is inpatient hemodialysis. These are not included. Our, our surveillance is only outpatient hemodialysis. Reverse of transient, transient patient, as we said, if our patient leave our city to, for example, you are in Riyadh and your patient uh, went to go to get to Jeddah and uh, they receive uh, uh, maintenance hemodialysis in Jeddah for two weeks or for one month, these are called uh, transient patients as long as they are not included in your new denominator uh, and they they are not included in your patient. So uh, for the transient patient, if transient patient from outside come to your center, include them. If, transient, if your patient go transiently to outside uh, centers, you don't include them. So you include only the patient who actually received the hemodialysis service in your uh, facility, irrespective they are regular patient or transient patient. Uh, for the uh, dialysis monitoring, uh, throughout the month, uh, monitor all outpatients who undergo dialysis at your center, uh, even if they are not present on the first week, uh, working first two working days. Uh, remember that we collected the numerator during the first two working days. But what if the patient uh, were uh, were not included? Yani, he joined the center in the middle of the month and develop infection. Should we include them? Yes. As long as they receive the service, again, temporary or permanently, you should include them. Uh, if they were present during the first two days, uh, two working days of the month, they will be included in the denominator. If they don't, then they don't, uh, they are not included in the uh, 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 denominator. Monitor transient patient and acute kidney injury patient, exactly the similar to uh, the maintenance hemodialysis patient. On the event from under risk factor, uh, uh, record all patients 
vascular access regardless of whether they are in use for hemodialysis or are not used or are not functional uh, so if the patient has more than one access uh, then you report the high risk patients you uh, but in the numerator form you include all types of access in this patient even if they are not used temporary or permanently or uh, uh, they are not functioning because of some uh, side effects so whatever access you should monitor uh, and record on the uh, numerator but for the denominator you only report one access which is the high risk access positive blood culture report all positive blood culture from a specimen collected as an outpatient or collecting for in the first two days of admission if the patient get admitted so we will consider that the first two days of admission like an outpatient extension and the, the the blood collected during this time should be included in the surveillance when we're talking about the vascular access to, there is five different vascular access as you see it could be uh, av fistula av graft uh, other vascular access tunneled uh, central line which is uh, uh, permanent central line and non-tunneled central line which is temporary central line and the the way I mentioned this uh, it, it also described increasing risk so the least risk of infection is associated with having AV fistula and the highest risk is associated with having a temporary central line for hemodialysis so the simple question why don't we have uh, our patients all having AV fistula or AV graft because this is uh, not an easy process it, it, it needs surgery uh, vascular surgery to in, uh, in, uh, to uh, construct the AV fistula or insert the AV graft uh, so it needs a special type of patient who's uh, who can stand the surgery and their vessels allow for the graft or the fistula so it's not every patient eligible to do fistula or graft so our aim should be always uh, having patients with fistula or graft and this is cannot happen unless you predict the hemodialysis good time before uh, the um, the dialysis because this fistula and graft as i said it is done through surgery and needs some time to mature and can be used functionally uh, in the dialysis so if the nephrologist uh, predicted that this patient will need dialysis in the next six months uh, he or she should start working on having uh, surgery to uh, construct the AV fistula or AV graft in this patient otherwise uh, if this happened uh, uh, accidentally or without uh, previous uh, management uh, then the patient will use temporary and permanent uh, a central line for dialysis which carry higher level of infection and this is a graph for AV fistula you will see that they will open uh, the location where artery and veins are uh, come together and they are connected with uh, the actual uh, tissue of the artery and vein and this would called be AV fistula so connection between artery and vein without uh, use of synthetic material uh, AV uh, graft uh, it is very similar but instead of uh, connecting the artery and vein because connecting the artery and vein need to approximate the artery and vein uh, anatomically they are not uh, adjacent to each other so you have to free the muscles the arteries and veins then approximate them together uh, in this case if we, they cannot do that uh, probably it is better to put a graft looped graft to connect the artery and vein and this is called AV graft permanent central line exactly as we said in calapsi uh, it, it travels under the skin for, for some distance before going to the heart or one of the big vessels attached to the heart and this usually have uh, like Hickman or Brovia catheter and uh, and this is associated with infection uh, but more or less lower than the temporary catheter the temporary catheter uh, here the the, the catheter uh, enter the skin the, then directly into the blood vessels 
so the, there is no travel under the skin uh, and uh, this one of the uh, uh, vascular axis that is associated with the highest level of infection and we should avoid it as much as we can. There is other types of vascular access devices and I included here a graph of uh, two of them. Uh, one a catheter graft hybrid access device. Uh, uh, it, is, it is shown here in uh, arterial uh, graft component as you see on the left side. Uh, and uh, another one is the implanted uh, uh, implantable port uh, here again it's a port under the skin travel under the skin and go to the big blood vessels uh, so these have midway uh, of risk of infection uh, compared so it is lower infection than catheter either temporary or permanent but they have higher infection than graft and fistula For the definition of dialysis events, uh, there are three main dialysis events, uh, outpatient intravascular antimicrobial, antimicrobial start and positive blood culture and signs of local infection, especially pus, uh, redness or increased redness, increased the swelling at the vascular access site. Um, there, there are additional four types of dialysis events that can be calculated if you collect, so you don't collect except the upper three, but once you collect them, we can easily from the form uh, define the other four. Uh, bloodstream infection is positive blood culture. Local uh, access related bloodstream infection, uh, when you have blood uh, stream infection where the source is access or uncertain. Local infection uh, similar to the last one uh, without uh, uh, positive blood culture. And uh, when you have vascular uh, infection, uh, it, it includes uh, uh, all local and uh, the bloodstream infection. So uh, the definition comes later, but this, the, uh, the idea is that this force can, these four types of infection can be calculated easily if you have collected the three above. So what is the date of event uh, for each infection? So if for intravenous antimicrobial start, it is the date of the first outpatient dose of antimicrobial course, because usually when you give antimicrobial, you don't give it in uh, one dose. Usually it uh, like three days course or five days course or, or two days course, whatever the, the, uh, the physician described prescribe for the patient. So how we define the date of event is this is the first, it is the date of the first dose of outpatient antimicrobial start. For the positive blood culture, it is the date of specimen collection, uh, which is similar to CLAP, CBSI, and on all other bloodstream infection or bacteremia. Uh, the, the local infection, it is the date of onset of the symptom. The symptoms could be bus, redness, or increased swelling at the vascular exercise. What if the patient have a combination, two uh, like uh, positive blood culture and uh, intravenous antimicrobial start, or positive blood culture and local uh, infection uh, and antimicrobial start. So two or more, two or three. Uh, in this case, take the earliest date of event if they are not all have the same. If, if they all, if they all, two or three have the same date of event, uh, it's fine. So the date of event is whatever. Uh, but if they have different date of events, so you take the earliest one. Um, remember the RIT or repeated infection time frame in CLEPSI, VAB, and CAUTI. Uh, it is the 14 days starting from the date of event that you cannot uh, diagnose another infection if they meet the criteria of the same type. Uh, here, instead of 14 days, we have 21 days. And it is event specific, uh, type specific, which means we have 21 day rule for intravenous uh, start of antimicrobial. We have 21 days uh, rule applies for um, positive blood culture for local infection. Uh, so the 20 day rule is 21 or more days must exist between two dialysis events of the same type. We have three types, as we said, 
uh, for a second occurrence to be reported as a separate dialysis event. Uh, it applies across calendar month. So if you're doing a two month surveillance or one month surveillance or whatever, and the dates uh, cross the, the month, like end of March, beginning of April, uh, it, it is okay. Uh, you don't stop uh, because uh, uh, it's a new month. If fewer than 21 days passed, you cannot um, uh, you cannot uh, like uh, diagnose another event. Uh, applies a 21 day rule uh, only applies to multiple events of the same type. But what if the patient, as I said, 21 day rule applies to all types of events? So you could you can have within the 21 days two types of events, but you cannot have the same time of event twice. This is the main idea of the 21 day rule. So the most important question here, when we can calculate the, uh, the 21 day rule. Uh, so you ideally you calculate it from the date uh, of event. However, some events that we have like antimicrobial use uh, um, like extend for a few days. So the idea here is from the last event, uh, uh, 21 days before you can consider a, a new event of the same time. So for intravenous antimicrobial start, the starting of the 21 days will be the last report, the, the last reported end of uh, antimicrobial course. So the course extended for five days, the last day of the course would be our start of uh, the 21 day. Uh, for both the black culture, it is the last reported date of uh, collection of the specimen. It is the last for uh, local infection, it is the last reported uh, onset. And you see here the word, the last reported, because uh, we're interested in uh, reported events. So if there is other events that were not reported, we'll, not, we'll ignore it. So, uh, if we have busted blood culture, for example, let me give you this example. If we have busted blood culture twice, one of them was reported, the first one, the second wasn't reported, should we consider the 21 days from the second one or the first one? We include it from the first one because the first one is, is the last reported one. So, the word last reported means we are not, we, we are interested in the last uh, the, the, the event that was reported before, but events that were not reported, we will ignore them when we uh, count the 21 days uh, duration. Uh, let's go for the events uh, one by one. Uh, the first one is intravenous antimicrobial start, and here you report all start of intravenous antimicrobial administered in outpatient setting regardless of the reason of administration. So was it uh, prophylactic? Was it because of the infection at the local site? Or was it because of bloodstream infection? It doesn't matter. Report intravenous antimicrobials and antifungal, but we do not include antiviral here in, in under the antimicrobial start. A start is defined as a single outpatient dose or or, and this is important to also, the first outpatient dose of a course that was started in home or in, uh, sorry, in, uh, was started in hospital, for example. Yani for if, if the patient uh, was admitted to the hospital and get a course for five days, after two days he was uh, released from the hospital, the first dose that he will receive under outpatient sitting uh, will be uh, considered our start for intravenous antimicrobial outpatient. Outpatient sitting include, but not limited to, when we say outpatient intravenous antimicrobial start, can you specify the location? It is the hemodialysis center, outpatient hemodialysis center. It is the doctor's office, which uh, clinic, uh, outpatient clinic, dialysis facilities. Uh, so, or home care for, for patients who receive home care, these are all included uh, as an outpatient setting. But what is not outpatient is admission, hospital admission. Report outpatient start that are continuation of inpatient treatment, as we said, uh, or, or a continuation of another outpatient facility. 
there must be 21 day vast before you can diagnose another antimicrobial start and remember that we count the 21 days from the end of the first course the first the first reported course or sorry the end of the last reported course to the beginning of the first course the new course uh, this is the 21 days counting if intravenous antimicrobial are stopped for fewer than 21 days and you record another one you will not consider as new event to apply 21 day rule to the outpatient intravenous antimicrobial start there it's that's a, a continuation of inpatient treatment consider the start today to be the first day of outpatient treatment as we said patient has five day course after two days of the course they are released from the hospital the third day would be the outpatient to start for uh, uh, the first day of outpatient intravenous start of antimicrobials and this is uh, like an example uh, or exercise for you S suppose a patient was in receiving antimicrobial outpatient hospital then hospitalized to the hospital then uh, released again to the outpatient setting so in june 4 they get antimicrobial they get another a course in the hospital that include three days in the hospital and two, ba two days outside the hospital uh, again we do not include any hospital treatment but we include outpatient sitting or outpatient that is a continuation of inpatient start so basically which one should be reported here uh, the one should be reported is the one that's in the outpatient sitting start in June 4 and those uh, in June 11 and 12, which is a continuation of intra uh, uh, of, uh, um, uh, outpatient continuation of inpatient course, as you see, he has four five days course. He uh, uh, co completed three days in the hospital. They are not reportable because they are inpatient uh, antimicrobial. But the the one that would be reported, the continuation is uh, day June 11 and June 12. And when you start the course here, you say the course start in June 11, and this is the date of event. And in the June 12, if you want to count, to count 21 days, count from June 12, which is the end of the outpatient course of antimicrobial intravenous antimicrobial start. Uh, for uh, this is again another exercise. So. Uh, suppose that the course is five days so you you start from the end of the first course to the beginning of the next course if the duration is 21 days or more 23 25 26 or something like that you consider this is a new antimicrobial start if they uh, less than 21 days so it is 20 19 18 15 10 5 you don't consider this as a new start and uh uh, and, and this is like repeated uh, uh, event, uh, similar to repeated events that we don't uh, include uh, in CLABSI, VAB, and CAUTI. Uh, the second event is uh, positive blood culture, and this is all positive blood culture collected uh, as an outpatient uh, specimen or collected within the first two days uh, of hospital admission. Remember that in CAUTI, VAB, and CLABSI surveillance, we consider that events that uh, are detected in the first two days of admission are present on, on admission. So uh, for us here in positive blood culture for dialysis surveillance, we'll consider also blood collected during the first, day, uh, first two days of admission, considering the day of admission is day one and the next day after the day of admission day two uh, any blood collected outpatient or in these two days will be included and the date of event will be the date of uh, blood specimen collection not the release of the uh, result of uh, blood culture similar to intravenous antimicrobial start there is a specific 21 uh, day role here uh, you have to have uh, 21 days before you can include another positive blood culture and again you count this from 
the date of blood specimen collection for the uh, the last reported uh, post blood culture and the date of the new post blood culture before you can consider this event or not if 21 days or more you consider if 20 or less uh, you don't consider For the blood specimen collection consideration, uh, as in uh, BSI, you should uh, get more than one blood culture set and uh, obtaining blood culture set from two sites separated by time interval uh, sufficient to make disinfection for the new, for the second site uh, is acceptable for, uh, for positive blood culture and dialysis. And this is an exercise for allowed blood specimen, as you see in the same example that we gave in intravenous antimicrobial start. We have a patient who was receiving dialysis at outpatient setting, then hospitalized for one or other reason, and then released to outpatient setting. So the culture, uh, the first culture, June 4, that was collected during outpatient setting is fine. Uh, culture collecting the, during the first two hospitalization days are fine, so June 7 is fine, June 9 is not fine because June 9 is represent an inpatient uh, blood collection. Outpatient after uh, the dialysis, right after the dialysis can be considered also. Another exercise, so how you calculate the 21 days, it is from the blood collection specimen date uh, of blood collection uh, specimen. Uh, and if it is 21 days or more, you consider this as a new event. If it is 20 days or less, you will not consider this as new event and you don't report. So you don't report 15 days, but you report 21 days. Uh, in this example, uh, as you see here, uh, we have um, a little difference. The first one in uh, 17 February was reported. The one that is in March 5 wasn't reported because the duration was less than 21 days. And then you have another one in March 15. So if you count the duration between March 15 and March 5, it is 10 days. But between March 15 and uh, February 17, it's 28 days. So which, which duration should we consider? Uh, again, uh, remember the word last reported. So did we report the March 5? No. We reported only the February 17. That's why we will report the March 15 because 21 day, 28 days from the last reported one, which is February 17. So this is this is the meaning of last reported. If there is some uh, in between that was not reported, you will ignore and only count the 21 days from the last reported one. So you report this. For the suspected source of uh, positive blood culture, we have uh, four types. We will go through them. We have vascular access. If there is objective evidence of vascular access infection, uh, you see infection at the vascular access, for example. Uh, you see hot, uh, hot skin, red, redness, and more than usually swelling. Uh, so this is signs for infection. Probably the vascular access is the source. Uh, another source, uh, it is source other than the vascular axis. When you have A and B are true, uh, or or B, sorry, or or B is true, uh, you have a culture from another site, uh, like for example, there is a skin infection outside the vascular area, and this skin infection uh, is thought to be the cause of the uh, positive uh, blood culture. Uh, and uh, the organism detected from this skin uh, is matching the one present in the uh, in the blood. Uh, so now we would consider that uh, there is evidence that a source rather than other than the vascular axis is the cause of this positive blood culture. Another scenario, there is a clinical evidence of infection at another site, which is thought to be the source of positive blood culture, but the site wasn't sampled for culture. 
So what, what we have here uh, is if we have infection at another site, uh, clinically thought to be the source of the positive blood culture in the blood, or we have a specimen that was collected from that primary source, uh, other site of infection, and the organism is similar to that of the blood. Uh, the only one that is not uh, acceptable here is you have another infection at another site and the detected organism is not matching the positive blood culture here. You cannot say it's a source other than uh, vascular access. Contamination when the uh, organism in, detected in the blood is one of the skin commensal, which are used in CLEPSI criteria, uh, LCBI criteria two and three. So if the organism detected in the blood is one of the skin commensal, so probably the source of the positive blood culture is contamination. What are the skin commensal? It is exactly uh, the same list uh, we used in LCBI criteria two and three for CLEPSI. It is diphtroid, bacillus species, propionobacterium, coagulase negative staph, which, in, which also has another name or include uh, staph epidermalis, a very dense stripped uh, uh, group, uh, aerococcus, micrococcus, and again, this is not an uh, inclusive list of all items that can be considered skin commensal, but this include the most common one. Uncertain if you cannot decide is it uh, is it uh, the source is the vascular axis or other uh, other source other than the vascular axis uh, or commensal. But commensal you can always say when you have the organism uh, skin commensal. So when you are uncertain, uh, you don't have enough evidence. You can say uncertain. But please do not use this unless you make some efforts to get the information, is it uh, vascular axis or not vascular axis? Uh, the last type is uh, signs of uh, local infection. So the axis, which is, for example, uh, AV fistula, AV graft, uh, uh, board, uh, um, uh, temporary catheter, uh, and, and so on. So report uh, bus redness and increased swelling. So you report each new outpatient episode uh, where the patient get one or more of these three symptoms. Bus always uh, is important. So any amount of bus will take it seriously, but for redness, it has to be more than expected and swelling, especially swelling, it has to be more than expected because usually any, any vascular access for dialysis patient, you will see some uh, some redness, some swelling. This is very common, and is this is not a sign of infection. But if you see this increased than expected, increased than usual, plus the presence of bus, or the the presence of bus is is uh, pathognomonic here, so you will consider this as a local infection. Again, there is 21 days before uh, should pass before you diagnose another one, and the duration is counted from the onset of the first to the onset, the first or the last reported one to the second or the new uh, local infection signs and symptoms. And here, as we said, we start from the onset to the onset, and if the duration is 21 days or more. Uh, you recall, you report if it is uh, 20 days or less, you do not report, and this is a repeated infection. So for 16 days, you don't report. For 22 days, you should report. Uh, remember that the, there is four types of dialysis that we can report based on the presence of the first three. This include positive blood, positive blood stream, uh, sorry, bloodstream infection, which means any positive blood culture, irrespective of the source. But if the source is known, uh, we we should say uh, known means vascular access or uncertain. We should say it is access-related bloodstream infection. So we removed from this the group that is two groups. Uh, does not uh, go. Yani, post, bloodstream infection include all positive blood culture. Access related, including a subset of them, that the source, the expected source or suspected source, uh, is vascular access or uncertain. So, what cannot be included in access related bloodstream infection are the positive blood culture 
where there is evidence of infection at another site as the source of suspected source of, of, of possible culture or it's a contamination. In this case, will not be included under access related bloodstream infection. Local infection is very similar to the third type of events uh, when the access related bloodstream infection is not present. Uh, and uh, the last one, vascular access infection, which means a local and access related uh, bloodstream infection, as you see, all types of infection uh, uh, related to vascular access. So, what is not included here contamination and when the positive blood culture is uh, uh, the source of positive blood culture is uh, infection at another place again with a matching uh, organism or thought on a clinical background to be the reason for the positive blood culture numerator data uh, for dialysis uh, include the, th the three main types of uh, dialysis events intravenous antimicrobial start both the blood culture and the local signs and symptoms of infection numerator data if a patient has positive blood culture and begin intravenous antimicrobial these two events should be recorded together in one form when reporting multiple dialysis events together always use the data from the first event that occurred. So the date of event would be the date of the first one out of the two or three uh, uh, concurrent uh, uh, dialysis events. Refer to dialysis event definition for the 21 days to consider uh, repeated infection versus new infection. Do not report unrelated dialysis events on the same form. What does it mean? If you have intravenous antimicrobial start at the beginning of the month, and 23 days they uh, have another 21 days from the end of the first course uh, you have another course in the same month so now you have two different courses of antimicrobial starch these should go in two different forms but what if you have two related events that happen together like they have busted blood culture and on the same time the physician prescribed intravenous antimicrobial these are uh, in, in uh, related events, they are reported in the same uh, form. So this is an exercise. Do, do you need to use one form or two forms? So if you have one event type, like for example here, antimicrobial, AM means antimicrobial, uh, most blood culture, uh, then uh, uh, bus uh, redness and increased swelling. So these are the local. So antimicrobial start, both blood culture and local infection uh, signs and symptoms. So if you have, for example, antimicrobial only, you use one form. If you have antimicrobial and both blood culture related events, use one form. If you have non-related antimicrobial start and local infection, unrelated, which means they, the, the, the antimicrobial wasn't used for the local infection signs and symptoms, antimicrobial use at the beginning of the month then after antimicrobial use you have local signs and symptoms of infection here it's unrelated use of antimicrobial or unrelated to events then you use two forms same event type twice in the same month you have antimicrobial uh, twice in the same month uh, when you say twice means more than tw 21 days or more at best so they are officially two courses of antimicrobial. You fill two forms. But if uh, any type of events in different month, you have, uh, for example, antimicrobial in one month and positive blood culture in another month. So any types of events, uh, individual or collected, in different month, please use different forms. We're talking uh, in the upper four examples, we're talking things that happen in the same month. So uh, please use this as a guide for you uh, to use one form or more than one form. Uh, this is our dialysis events uh, form and uh, it has the three major ones and also for the positive blood culture will ask you about what is the suspected source? Is it vascular contamination source other than the vascular or uncertain? This would determine uh, to include or not in the four other types that we described before. Here are the, some of the deta yeah, details and uh, 
the uh, uh, one of uh, one or two questions that were added to the last version uh, of the form when we ask where it was collected because uh, several times the blood was collected in the hospital and included in the analysis so uh, outpatient dialysis people would start complaining why you include this uh, post blood culture uh, in our um, in our surveillance while they are collected in the uh, hospital so if you have this question it would be a good idea because you can answer them that this was collected during the first two days of admission but what if they are uh, after the two days of admission considering the admission day as day one no we don't we shouldn't include this uh, in positive blood culture uh, the other problems of additional information, I don't see this as a big uh, addition, but uh, since NHS is collecting them, collecting them, so uh, probably we need to collect. The back of the form is similar to other forms and include uh, the presence of any uh, antimicrobial resistance in the positive blood culture, similar to what happened in CLAPSI uh, form. Denominator data, this is a very uh, uh, unique denominator uh, uh, if compared to other device associated infections. Uh, we collect the number of patients receiving dialysis during the first two working days of uh, the month. And when we say first two working days, so uh, obviously if the first one or two days were weekends or holiday, you shouldn't uh, consider this uh, as first two days. So the first two working days, means the working day for the center and receiving patients for dialysis, these you will include. Of course, when we say first two days, why they say two days? Because as I said, usually the maintenance hemodialysis patient receive dialysis for three months per week, which means every other day uh, and one day off. Uh, the, the week is seven days. So every other day means six days and uh, Friday off, for example. So. If you collect in the first two working days of the uh, 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 of the month, you will make sure that include all patients because patients who are not receiving on Monday receive on Tuesday, patients who are not receiving on Tuesday receive on Monday, and so on. Uh, but make sure you don't include the same patient again. Uh, suppose a patient was showing on the first two days. Uh, uh, for example, uh, he he comes for the first day and had a problem, didn't complete uh, the the dialysis process, and come on the other day just to make it. Um, you don't include this patient twice. You record uh, each patient one time only. Uh, the inclusion and exclusion the same as population as we said before, and remember that we include transient patient and we exclude patient, our patient who did not show in the first two working days because they received dialysis now at another city or another center. Um, count each patient once only, as we said, uh, and please stratify them by vascular axis. Uh, and if the patient have more than type of uh, vascular axis, please use uh, the highest risk given the risk in fistula, graft, uh, other types, uh, permanent catheter, temporary catheter is of increasing risk as we said before. If you have no patient at a certain vascular axis, please add, please add zero in the denominator so we can uh, understand that you looked for this type of uh, uh, patient with certain axis and you couldn't find any. Accurate data here is very important because it would uh, make big difference in the rate. Uh, the, remember, it is patient month, not patient days. So each one here represent like 31 uh, in the CLAPSI VAB uh, CAUTI denominator. We are not looking for patient days or device days. We're looking for patient receiving one month of, of dialysis in a center. Uh, and this is an exercise. Uh, do you have to include what? Uh, do you have to include first or not to include? So if the patient um, uh, uh, d d did not did not show uh, for uh, in the first or second days because he is admitted in the hospital, we will not include him. This is like patient E. If the patient have more than uh, type of uh, catheter, a uh, type of access like. Uh, uh, 
uh, non-tunneled central line or graft, you use the more risky non-tunneled central line or tunneled central line and fistula, use tunneled central line and so on. So you have to go through the list of the patient included in the first two days of the month and uh, on the right side, you put what access type should be they assigned should be assigned if they have one one type is very easy like patient f he has fistula so it's one fistula it's, uh, patient g he had graft uh, and so on but if they have more than one it shows the more risky one if the patient couldn't show because they receiving uh, uh, access now so receiving dialysis now at another center or because he is admitted to the hospital, you don't include them in the denominator. And this is how you record the first day and second day. Of course, our denominator will be the total of the first and second day. And please remember, we shouldn't report the same patient twice. How we do the analysis? Uh, we divide dialysis events per patient month and times this 100. And this is the only, uh, I guess, uh, device uh, rate that we do using 100 uh, uh, metric uh, and you can do this collectively for all events and for each event separately intravenous antimicrobial start positive blood culture and local signs and, and symptoms uh, dialysis event is ir you have the observed over the expected observed is the number of dialysis events that you collect uh, during the surveillance and uh, the expected that you can calculate from a benchmark and as other SIR if the rate if the number of SIR is more than one means that your dialysis rate is higher than the benchmark if it is one similar to the benchmark if your SIR is less than one means that your dialysis event rate is less than the benchmark the benchmark here it doesn't matter it could be your uh, MOH benchmark GCC benchmark and NHSM benchmark here we will speak about the dialysis bundle. Uh, for CDC uh, bloodstream infection prevention and dialysis facilities, they have a list uh, including surveillance feedback, catheter reduction and fistula promotion, as, I, as we said, fistula and graft, the least infection rate, staff education competency, patient education engagement uh, by educating the patient, giving some uh, pamphlets uh, make some hotline between patients and staff and so on catheter vascular access care by uh, by using a septic technique when connecting and disconnecting catheter and using dressing changes uh, hand hygiene chlorhexidine used for skin antisepsis catheter hub disinfection every time catheter is accessed or disconnected antimicrobial oil to catheter exit site during dressing a change so for a bundle we choose only a few elements that can be used for catheter and uh, fistula graft so for the catheter which is uh, the more risky for infection you have hemodialysis catheter connection disconnection exit site care there is criteria for appropriate connection appropriate disconnection and appropriate exit site care and for all types of patients, so catheter, well, uh, uh, fistula, graft, you have dialysis station routine disinfection, hemodialysis injectable medication preparation, hemodialysis injectable medication administration. So the dialysis station has also some recommendation, injecting a medication, so preparation or administration have some recommendation. So these are the items of the catheter, for uh, the items of the, the hemodialysis bundle for a catheter. Uh, and we have it in a line listing uh, and in the top of the form you have some information that uh, me uh, that, that are the recommendation for each for each item of the six items can you for example hemodialysis catheter connection you should perform hand hygiene uh, uh, do, make donning of uh, person protective equipment provide mask for the patient a scrub dialysis catheter hub and lumen using appropriate disinfectant scrub catheter hub with antiseptic and allow to dry uh, connect the catheter to bloodline aseptically allow new cap aseptically uh, weekly um, and these are recommendation of the first item there is a recommendation for other items and it's actually all or none rule which means if you lose if you miss one of these recommendations you will miss this point and of course if you miss a point 
you miss the whole bundle. So it is very difficult to achieve high rate using this uh, uh, unless you are reporting uh, individual items like uh, hemodialysis catheter connection is a separate item, disconnection is another item, exit, side care, a, a third item, and so on. Uh, for the fistula graft, uh, instead of uh, catheter connection, disconnection, and exit side care, you have fistula graft cannulation recommendation, decannulation recommendation. But for the station and injectable medication, it is the same as catheter. And similar form line listing, and at the top, at the top of the form, you will see uh, details for each item. The new items here are only are AV fistula graft cannulation or decannulation. For the bundle uh, analysis, you uh, count the number of patients with catheter or AV fistula graft with, who are compliant with all applicable bundle components. Yani for example, you may be doing only the four items of the bundle and you ignore the injectable medication preparation and administration. So if you are using only the first four items of the bundle, patients who are compliant with all the four items together added on the numerator and all patients who have been surveyed for this bundle on the denominator and times this 100 is a percentage will give you the compliance of each of patients who have the four items or the six items if you are using six items uh, compliant. You, you can always do this by uh, type of access. You can always do this by, by item of the bundle. And you have four items or six items if you go with the six items. So you can do the same uh, formula for each item alone and for all items together. Uh, and this is an example of uh, uh, on the top of uh, data for dialysis bundle for catheter. You have catheter connection, disconnection, exit site care, and uh, disconnection of the station. And as you see, we are not uh, going with the uh, injectable medication. So you can use, you can choose to have four or three items and ignore uh, medication, uh, or you include medication. You can do the analysis for each item separately and all items together. And if you want more details, uh, this is not recommended, but just in case you are doing survey or something to uh, identify the missing parts, you can do also by uh, individual items under each uh, 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 bundle uh, component. Uh, so for uh, the catheter connection, you have uh, we we stated to you uh, all these items, and you can go through by one one by one uh, compliance. But this is not regular work. This should be only uh, a research one or survey to identify the weakness in the unit to fix. Uh, as you see, if you miss one item like uh, providing mask for a patient, you may reduce the overall compliance of that item connection of the catheter to very low. Here it is 17%, uh, while most of the uh, items are uh, in the 80s or 90s, only two items in the 30 or 50s, uh, and, in, uh, and they are related to using the person protective equipment. Uh, if these two items go to the 80s or 90s, this 17 become 70 or something like that. So you be very careful uh, about what items uh, uh, included and uh, uh, and uh, educating the staff to use this item, otherwise you will get very low uh, dialysis bundle uh, compliance. Thank you very much uh, for uh, listening to the dialysis surveillance.